Hey, what's up? Today I'm going to unbox the 4TB Samsung portable SSD drive and I'm going to share with you some of the very painful experience that I had when I was in the wilderness trying to use some of these drives. Definitely stay tuned to understand why it is very important to pick the right SSD drive. And anyway, so I'm going to do the unboxing first and then we're going to talk about different kinds of storage. I'm also going to share with you my workflow of how I transfer and backup my photos, my raw files in the wild. By the way, this is Tim Manley. I'm a wildlife photographer. I travel all the time. Currently, I'm a judge for Nature Photographer of the Year and Bird Photographer of the Year. All right, so let's change the angle. Some of you are gonna laugh at me for my gear acquisition syndrome and I am like a very serious case right here. As you can see, I have so many of these drives. So before we begin, let's just do the unboxing first, okay? So may, let me just put this aside. Yeah, it's like a poker player, right? Okay, all right. So this is, as you can see, this is the Samsung T7, four terabyte, right? Very lightweight. So let's open it. I never really know how to open it. Is it from here? Yeah, okay, let's try this. All right. Okay, as you can see, Samsung. Ah, okay, it's right here. Look at that. It has this wave structure, which is quite different from the previous two terabyte and one terabyte T5 and T7 that I have used. And this is the USB-C plug. And I think they usually come with two cables. Right, all right. So one is the USB-C and USB-C and one is USB-C to USB. So that's it. Is there anything else? Yeah, the, I don't understand why the menu is so big. Is there a lot to understand how, anyways. <laughs> okay, okay, so I have another one. So usually when I go out for a trip, like a one week trip, I would have two four terabyte SSD drives so that I can back up to at least two. Like three is even better, but then it's more expensive, a lot more work, but I have experience of drives failing. Having two backups is much better than just one. So let's get back into my story about this. So this is right here. Is it still gonna be like that? Okay, years ago, when I go travel, I would use this traditional like Western Digital or Seagate external hard drive to back up the files. But this, as you can see, is a lot bigger than the SSD drive. And also, if you drop it, you might lose all the data. But the solid state drives, they are a lot more stable than that. And, and also, another thing is a lot quicker. So back in the days, if you want to back up like a, a 100 gigabyte folder of files with this kind of external hard drives, it will take up like an hour. It's crazy. It's a long time. But I think the first time when I tried to use it, like this one, the T5, is it one, two terabyte drive? Back in the day, it's only one terabyte. When I copy the files, it only take a minute. So I say many times, say 30 times, 60 times faster. And this is huge because sometimes in the wilderness, we don't have a lot of electricity and sometimes they turn it off after 10 p.m. So every second counts, you have to back up your files as quickly as possible. And I still remember one time I was in a very remote area and, and I was backing the files into this big, drives and and then I fell asleep and when I woke up the next morning turned out that the electricity was gone in the middle of the night the tran transfer of the files were aborted and I look into my computer and I see that like half of the files were in the drives and half of the files are not and they're still in the CF card and it's oh crap I only have <laughs> this card and the other card is still full as well so I can't format the car to go out to take photos. But then there is not enough time for me to back up the files into this drive. So it was a disaster. I think I was like deleting some files in the middle of the field and it was just very stressful. That's why this, I no longer use this. This one is the Samsung Extreme and this is the Extreme Pro. 
the size of the Extreme is smaller than the Extreme Pro. I heard that you don't really need the Extreme Pro in terms of the speed because there is like some bottleneck for the cable or for the computer, or whatever. But for me, I always get the fastest, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm hopeless. Okay. But then sometimes I'm out of money, so I'm only getting the extremes. So that's what happens. And also with different sizes, it's easier to distinguish them in the field as well. So as you can see, I'm very organized. <laughs> the oldest method, I just write it on some paper and tape it there. And then these are the Samsung. T5, T7, I don't know what that means. It's just newer version. And this is also T7, but four terabytes. As you can see, the four terabytes is a lot bigger than the, not really a lot, a little bit, quite substantial actually, bigger. And it has like some plastic surface in here, which I think is shock absorption. Sorry, my English. Shock absorption. Is it? So the speed of T7 is of course faster than the T5 and as I mentioned to you, every second counts. And before all of this, I also have used the try this Western Digital one because these were out of stock sometimes. So sometimes I bought these external hard drives a few days before my trip and sometimes they were sold out. So I tried other brands like the, this one is Crucial, this one is Western Digital. So now let's get into some trouble. So when we talk about trouble and painful experience, of course, you have to look at my face, right? Okay, so first of all, these days we are using cameras with nice 15 megapixel, 16 megapixel. So it is very easy to fill a card, like a 512 gigabyte card, especially if you're taking 4K videos as well. So a four terabyte external hard drives is better in my experience. And the SanDisk Extreme Pro is the fastest and I have used it for quite a few years already, like at least two years. And they have been always reliable. But in my last trip to Kenya, some of the photographers in the group and myself, who also bought the, the SanDisk drives right before the trip, after a day or two, when we are packing up the files, all of a sudden, it said drives not recognizable. And I was shocked because this had never happened before. I had to format the drive and it was crazy, but thankfully I was able to download some of those recovery software. I forgot the name, but that recovery software, I pay a hundred bucks for the premium version because I don't care at the time. I just want to recover the files because I already formatted the CF Express card, even though I know even after you format it, you can still recover it, but it's just a lot of work and you may lose some of the files. So I was trying not to do anything and try to recover it from the hard drives. So thankfully that software was able to do it. I basically was Googling all the softwares that can recover files from failed hard drives. And I look at all the reviews and finally found that one. And I'm going to put the link below. I'm not being sponsored by any of those. I just want to let you guys know that one works really well. So. Both of my drives died. Sometimes I said, if you back up to two drives, I thought it would be fail safe, but turn out it's not. Because when one drive was not recognizable, I said, like, thank God I back up all my files to my second drives and both of them died. Later, my friend told me that I have to format my drive every time when I use it. But the thing is, I, I did that before. I, I did the, all the formatting of the drives and erase and partition. But then after a while, when I was using the Samsung, when I don't format the drives, it was okay. There, there's never a problem. Later, I heard that, I don't know if it's true, but maybe there is a batch on the production line that all these SanDisk drives were having problems. And so I still have to look for, because I have so many drives, I still have to look for the drive that failed and I probably have to send it back to check. Anyway, so after that incident, I switched back to Samsung, the four terabyte. So that's why I just bought several of them. So Samsung is very reliable, but it is definitely slower than the Extreme Pro for the SanDisk. So I make a video comparing the two. So what I meant by slower is, if you click on some folders with all the raw files, it may take like, a few seconds before the files load so that I can view the files in a Samsung T7. 
four terabyte, but for the SanDisk, it's almost instant. So sometimes I got a little bit nervous because when the files are loading in the Samsung, I just hope that it wouldn't give me like an error message or something. For SanDisk, it's a lot faster. But now, after that incident, I still trust T7 so far, it is good. So now let's get into my workflow. When I'm in the field, what I do is, so I would, okay, so let me just grab this one. So I use the, the 512 gigabyte CF Express card for my Nikon. So after one day of shooting photography, I came back with two cards that are filled, right? So what I do is I would use the card reader. I never transfer the files directly from the camera. So I take these two cards out from the camera and then I put them one by one into the card reader. And then I plug the card reader into my computer, which is a 16 inch MacBook Pro. M1. I don't have money to upgrade to M2 yet because I just got the Z8 Nikon, so I'm broke. So that's why I need more views because I'm a YouTuber now. So I plug it into the computer and then I would attach this one USB-C cable with the SSD drive in also into the laptop. That's why having two USB-C port is very, ports are very, is very important. Sorry, my English. Ah! very important for my transfer. So what I do here, remember, so I would go into the external hard drive. And first of all, for example, if I just went to Kenya in February in 2023, so I would say the drive, because the drive name, you can't be too long. So I just say Kenya 2023. And then when I click on that folder, I'll create a new folder. So what I do is assume that I just got back from the first day of my trip, which is seven days, for example, then I, I would write down a new folder called day one. And if I'm, I have multiple cameras, I would just say a Z9 day one or something, but usually I just go to day one and then I click on that. And then I will create two new folders. One is called disk one. Another folder is called disk two. Instead of creating like folder called photos or creating a folder called videos, I don't. I just go into day one, disk one, and then I drag everything from that drive, from that card on the card reader into that folder. So everything, even if there are some redundant files on the setup of the card or whatever, just everything, including the DCIM folder, the whatever folder. So this two, so the disk two also drag the whole thing into the day one disk two. So after that, what I do is, I would eject this drive away. And then I'm going to put another drive, the second SSD drive into the computer. And then I would do the same thing again. So that now you have two drives with identical files as backups, right? And then one of them, I always carry it in my pocket, in my jacket or something in a Ziploc bag. So that one is wherever I go to bathroom, I take shower, <laughs> I can't bring it with my showers because the steam may affect it. But if you go to a restaurant, you go to anywhere, going out to take photos, I always carry one of the drives with me so that if anything happened in the lodge or if somebody steal it, I still have this one drive because there's nothing more important than the photos, right? So number one, most important is of course the experience in the wilderness, but number two, the files, there is not like I can lose, break the camera, break the lenses on the last day, not on the first day, but this I can lose. So that's why I don't mind to spend more money to make sure I have enough copies of these backups. So this one, I put it on another place. So never put your drives in the same backpack. Right? If you put all the drives, there with all the backup files in, then there's no point in that, right? After I backup, what I do is I use a software called the Fast Raw Viewer. The reason I don't use Lightroom is because if I do the Lightroom import and then the catalog and those, it can take up a lot of space and also it take up a lot of the time. And the most important thing is when you review photos, even if each of the file have a little bit of lag, like on one second of lag, that's gonna add up. But for if you use fast raw viewer, there is instant, there's no lag. So you can just go through all the photos. I'll go into all of the photos and then I'll go to 100% zoom. And then I look into the eyes of the animal or the subject of whatever you're photographing and make sure that it is super sharp. What I mean by super sharp is sometimes by accident, the camera 
did some crazy stuff and then from continuous turn into single shot or something and you didn't know and by checking the files really there's nothing you can do for that day but if you see that something is off super noisy something is weird so, so that's why you always have to check you can check on your camera do something and then you can fix it for tomorrow if you have a chance to go back to the same place that is perfect and if not at least you can change it before the end of the trip when you mess up everything so that's why that step of checking using fast raw viewer is very important i won't use lightroom until i go home and build catalog and stuff you may say so tin man why do you have so many of these drives all you need is just a few drives and then in the field and then when you come back you can always back it up into some bigger storage like you raid drive right raid the raid drive and I have to share my experience with you. So a few years ago, I had a hard drive failure, like some of these uh, Western digital failure. And I went to some of these uh, shops, some of those companies for to do recovery. And I asked them, like, what is the safest way to uh, do backups? And they said, like, all these drives fail all the time. And so I said, how about the RAID drive? Is it much more reliable because they have all this redundancy? And the staff told me that they have also seen RAID drive failing. <clears throat> They said, actually, the best way is to buy a bunch of these one or two terabyte drives because those are usually the most reliable and then just back up the most important files into these drives and every year or two back up to another new drives and then just, just keep doing that. And of course, also save the most important files into the cloud and also do an offsite storage. So that is really the way. And at the time, my friends kept on telling me about how reliable the RAID drive is. So I bought one a lot of money, like 1,500 or two grand. And so for that drive, it's 12 terabytes and it's a like RAID 5 or something. So they have five drives in this RAID drives. And if one fail, they can recover with some complicated algorithm. So anyway, so that 12 terabyte RAID drive was excellent, like quiet, fast, reliable, it never had a problem. So after a few years, I actually filled up my 12 terabyte. So this time I decided to buy like a 16 terabyte or 20 terabyte, I forgot, maybe a 20 terabyte drive. But this time, this new drive is very loud, like it's very noisy. So like when I'm doing something in the computer, like the noise is just really annoying. And that, that had never happened on my 12 terabyte drive before. So I called the support a few times and they were quite responsive. And then they were asking me to try this, try that, send them the log files and, and all these things. And also, other than being noisy, sometimes it seems like there is some like error message or something like that. So I kept on having these issues and then I was talking to the support. And finally, they told me to update the software of the drive. Like there is some, is it firmware called firmware update or something? And then it may solve my problem. So I have my old 12 terabyte attached to the computer in my iMac Pro. And then this new drive, 16, I plug it in as well. Okay, so they have different names too on the drive. I name them differently. And so once I click on the firmware upgrade, it asks me if it is okay to format the drive, right? So you can imagine how careful I am when I see format, right? So I make sure that this new drive is, is highlighted and make sure that it is not my 12 terabyte drive, right? So I check a few times and then I click on okay. And guess what? It formatted everything. It formatted my new drive and then it also formatted my old drive. And I was like, oh my God, right? All gone, 12 terabytes. I talked to the support and I said, you guys like doing RAID drive, right? So you should be able to recover the formatted one. And they said, no, if you formatted the drive, there's no way you can recover the files. So all 12 terabytes of drives, like files completely gone. And I was so mad. Thankfully, some of the most important files, I had backed it up in, in the cloud. If you ask me to do a RAID drive again, I'll never do it. So that's why these days, I just spend more money onto these four terabyte drives and I just keep backing them up. And because to me, this drive is like 300 bucks or something, but uh, the memory of it is just uh, so valuable. And uh, if we spend so much money on our trip, on our camera, on our, our, our lenses, more important than having them well back up into the fastest drives ever. So that is my, <sighs> my painful lesson for the drive. So if you have any questions or if you have any experience, let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoy this video, definitely check out my other video about how to pick the best camera in any budget. 
and make sure to subscribe and and like that will help me a lot and hope you enjoy these stories and i'll see you next time